Operate in truth, right? Operate in truth. You know, tell the truth. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Gator Truth, Lord of Football podcast. I'm Daniel, and on this episode, we're going to take a look at the Gators' upcoming matchup against the UCF Knights in the Swamp this Saturday night at 7.45 p.m., and it'll be broadcasted on the SEC Network. I hope you had a good bye week because there was a lot of great football on from noon until late into the night with Utah, Arizona capping off a great day of college football. That's one of the things I do like about bye weeks is I got I get to enjoy a lot more uh, games going on around the country, but there's nothing quite like a Gators game day, much less a big night game that we have coming up in the swamp. And I will say this game after the Knights lost to Colorado last week, did um, did start to seem a little bit better for us. And I talked to, of course, if you haven't seen it, uh, definitely check out our opposite sidelines or opposing sidelines uh, with Night Bingle from the Knighted Ones uh, on YouTube, YouTube exclusive, where he talks about UCF strengths, weaknesses, and many other things about the program. But he did talk about how after last week, you know, where they thought very, very confident about the game going into last week, about the Florida game going into last week. Now they've kind of reverted more towards a 50-50 feeling where I'd say Florida fans going into the UCF Colorado game last week were kind of in the, we're probably not going to win this blown out to now more in the 50-50 camp. So it's kind of eat evened out a little bit for sure. Um, And we're going to get in. We're going to talk about the offense. We're going to talk about the defense. We're hopefully going to see a gear win this Saturday. But before we get into it, I do want to give a shout out to my friends at Alvarez Lawn Company. If you're in the Central Florida area and you're looking for someone to do some lawn work for you, whether that's mowing your lawn or you've got a landscaping project that you've been putting off, give my friends at Alvarez Lawn Company a call or text for a free quote at 407-490-2617. You can also shoot them an email at Company at gmail.com. Once again, for a free quote, you can... Call or text Alvarez Lawn Company at 407-490-2617 or give them an email at Company at gmail.com. Alvarez Lawn Company, building plans that work for you. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Florida's offense against the UCF defense. I have put together some stats since both teams have played four games, and I know it's easy to look at UCF schedule and say, well, they've not played that many difficult teams. I would say, yes, that's true. But also for their talent composite, they're a lot closer in talent composite to Colorado as we are to Mississippi State, for example. Um, You know, we played a bad Sanford team. They played a bad New Hampshire team. They played TCU. Yeah, we played Miami. So we have had a tougher road but i would say before we just say they've had an easy schedule i would also say talent composite kind of a little bit different for them and who they've played as well and we've also had a pretty good team in miami of course they almost lost to virginia tech and probably should have lost to virginia tech this past week on a controversial uh reversal (laughs) on the last play of the game as far as the refs overruling the uh, touchdown, making it an incompletion. And then UCF, of course, uh, or then, sorry, Texas A&M, you know, has not necessarily been the best team outside of our game against them. With that said, let's take a look at the Florida offensive ranking so far 
a third of the way through the season and UCF a third of the way through the season where their defense ranks. Florida, 424.2 yards per game. That's good enough for 50th in the nation. We are currently scoring 31.8 points per game. That's 55th in the nation. I know a lot of people, at least on Twitter, want to talk about or in the preseason want to talk about, well, at times we average 30 points per game. Well, if you're not in the top 50 doing almost 32 points per game, you need to start getting that offense up there. And part of that is when you look at the a and game, you look at the Miami game, we're averaging less than 20 per game when we're not playing a 118th ranked defense in Mississippi State or we're not playing a bad FCS team in Samford. Um, so do need to get those numbers up, but that's where we are through four games. Um, we do have 278.5 pass yards per game, which is good enough for a 30th in the nation ranking. However, we've only thrown for 278, which is that number we've only thrown for that number or more in one game this season. And of course that was, DJ Lagway's big game against Sanford. Every other game has been less than that average. So that one game right now is really spiking that average. We do need to help. We need to get closer to that average uh, coming up or else we're going to be in a lot of trouble with the schedule that we have remaining. And to finish up on the Florida offensive stats, 145.8 rushing yards per game. That is 84th in the nation. For a run game that is predicated, or for a offense that is predicated on the run game, not great to be 84th in the nation. With that said, the UCF defense, uh, again, playing a little bit softer schedule to this point, 331.5 yards per game, 53rd in the nation. So not the best uh, defense, definitely uh, better than UF statistically right now. And we'll get to that but uh, not a top 50 defense uh, allowing 24.75 points per game, which is 77th in the nation. They allow uh, 251.5 passing yards per game, 106th in the nation. However, their run defense allows only 80 yards per game, and that is good enough for 11th in the nation. So looking at that, how UCF strength seems to be their run defense. Uh, we really need to do something to start that off. And I say we need to pass the ball and we need to pass the ball quickly. Uh, if you've seen that posing sidelines, definitely uh, you remember where I start laughing because Knight Bingle talks about how, hey, Teams are beating our pass rush and getting lots of yards on quick passes. And I laugh because of since 2022, I've sat here and said to you listeners, we need a quick passing game. The biggest thing that's hurting us is a quick passing game. So it'll be curious if we actually see that quick passing game, which is hopefully a little bit of that has been put in during the bye week. I wouldn't hold my breath on that, but that is something we need to do to start, you know, getting that, uh, run defense having to force some some support in the passing game because if you do that, then that'll open up yards for the run game. And again, to go back here, we're 84th running the ball. So if we try and force an 84th ranked yards per game rushing offense against the 11th ranked against the run defense, Chances are that's a matchup that doesn't favor us. However, UCF having the 106th ranked pass D in the nation, that's something we need to definitely take advantage of. Uh, Ada Mizell, take, you know, have him, have Elijah Badger, um, Kamir DK, have those guys take advantage. And then also get your tight ends like Boardingham and Hanson involved. However, like we talked about a few weeks ago, let's get some of the playmakers, some of the speed at this receiver position, the ball, and let them make plays in space. 
We saw what happened with Mizell, even though the plays were called back. We saw dude can run and dude can make plays in space if we get him the ball. And that's what we need to see. And so hopefully that's how our offense tries to take advantage of this defense. And that is by attacking a very, very poor pass defense. And we do so with a quick passing game. You do that, you're going to get the crowd into it. And of course the crowd is going to energize our defense, which has struggled against the Knights offense. Um, as far as rotation, who knows what that's going to look like for the quarterbacks. I assume it's going to be the same that we saw against Mississippi state, but I could be wrong, which is every third, um, every third drive going to DJ Lagway, no matter the result, but we will see. Um, and so you know, hands up. Uh, who knows how, how that will look. I don't really like the, no matter the, the result, uh, no matter the result idea, because if, for example, Graham Mertz is going out there throwing interceptions, and I know this is a more extreme example. You have to throw the ball down the field to uh, throw interceptions. But, uh, you know, if Graham Mertz is throwing up, interceptions but it's like we're not changing what we're doing or dj lagway is just having a terrible day every third drive why not just let it be graham mertz team so e either one of those that's why i don't like the no matter the result or we see uh what we saw in starkville where graham mertz leads us for a touchdown on the second drive and then despite possibly getting into a rhythm now dj lagway is coming in and he moved the ball pretty well on his drive until there's a fumble. But the point is hard to get the offense in a rhythm. If once they start to do it now, a new quarterback's coming in. And so we'll see, but Florida has weapons. If you watch uh, that opposing sideline for those that didn't night, Bingle talked about how, yeah, our past defense has not been great and teams have been able to take advantage of it. If you watch last week, the UCF Colorado game, Colorado took shots down the field, took advantage of it. And a lot of that was getting their guys in the space and letting their guys make play. So hopefully that's something that we see from our team coming off of the bye week. And so before we talk about the defense, and again, I think the biggest and only real key is to get the passing game going against, again, the 106 ranked pass defense. If we try and force a run, it's not going to be a good night for us. And you can come back, comment below, and tell me, hey, you were wrong. And I'll be like, thank God I was. If we try to force a run and we win the game, I don't think we do. I think it's just establish the pass to then set up the run rather than the other way against UCF. But with that said, let's go ahead before we talk about the defense and talk about my friends at GatorChire.com. GatorChire.com is a message board and lots of uh, fun things going on there. Lots of fun discussion. Uh, definitely check them out uh, every so often. I have an article that pops up there. Have not been as consistent this year as I should be, but still. Uh, Aaron Bland, who is on the Huddle Up Gators, is the owner and operator of Gator Chatter. Very good guy. A lot of good guys over there. As I tell people, there's a theory out there that message boards are for older people. I'm like, no, it's just like Twitter, except for everyone can stay on one topic in this thread and you can choose what topic to go to rather than just seeing a bunch of blasts of posts at once about all different uh, topics. But anyways, check out my friends at GatorChire.com, your Florida Gator sports bar. Okay, so just like we did with the offense, let's look at some of the statistics for the Florida defense and the UCF offense. And the Florida defense right now is ranked 112th in the nation in yards given up per game, which is 425 0.5 yards per game. It's funny because I talked about how the passing game is really being driven up by DJ Lagway's performance against Samford. 
However, even with that Samford game, our defensive yards per game is terrible. Even against Mississippi State, we gave up more than 425. So that just speaks to, without Samford, just how bad are we against FBS opponents? Hopefully, they fix some things during the bye week. I know there's been talk about it being a tough bye week, and Billy Napier said we've thought of some things. Who knows? We will see if that's true. We will see if we are better than the 425.5 that we've been giving up a game so far. We've been giving up 27.25 points per game, uh, which is 92nd in the nation. Gave up 236.8 passing yards per game, which is 97th in the nation. And then 188.8 rushing yards per game 109th in the nation i don't think i need to tell anyone that this uf defense so far has been pretty bad however jason marshall has been pretty good for the gators uh currently top top rated uh single coverage guy on pro football focus And if you listen to me preseason last year, and I think I talked about preseason this year, first two years, doesn't give up a touchdown pass, has a great passer rating allowed, and then it looks like he's returned to form this year after a down year last year. The question is, can the defense around him join him in that pursuit? Now to look at some of the stats for the UCF offense, they are currently fourth in the nation in yards per game at 543.2 yards per game. Funny enough, Florida will play all four of the current top four as of October 2nd, 2024, which is Miami, UCF, Tennessee, and Ole Miss. And I put those in the order in which we face them. So we're having one of our worst defenses while we face again as of October 2nd, 2024, the top four offenses in the nation. UCF uh, scores 39.5 points per game. That's 20th in the nation. Now, granted, both of their games against power four teams Now, granted, I could kind of say the same about us, but we had Mississippi State, but both of their Power 4 teams were below that average. Um, So they are coming down, where I think our points per game have gone up a little over the last game against Mississippi State. Currently, UCF's offense is struggling in the passing department, which is 217.2 passing yards per game. That's 80th in the nation. And their, however, their running yards per game, their rush yards per game is 326, which is second in the nation behind Army. So if you're going to ask me, and of course I say this every week, what is the key against whoever we're facing? I always say stop the run so you can force the other team to pass. This is a very almost egregious example of why you stop the run to force a pass. And that's because you've got the number two rushing team in the nation. If you can slow that down, if you can stop, if you can force KJ Jefferson to try and beat you, he has not been great at times for the Knights uh, this season. He's thrown some bad interceptions, did not have too good of a throw on the interception. The end zone I mentioned earlier against Colorado and truthfully, his passing wasn't much as much of a problem last year against us in the swamp as his running game. But that's where we're going to need to tackle him last year in the swamp. The play I always refer to is we had a fourth down, could have tackled him in the backfield, ends the game. What do we do? We don't tackle him, runs for a first down, and keeps the drive alive. He is a big guy, but if anything we've got to be sure tackling if we can get pressure if we can stop that run game and get pressure then well there's a chance he's going to do something to lose the game or help lose the game for the knights through a turnover through bad throws and that's what we need to do and you know there's a lot to say about jefferson he did beat us last year 
Uh, he's a big guy, you know, I'll repeat, repeat that. We talked about how we have no one on the scout team or Billy Napier talked about how we have no one on the scout team who can replicate his size. And well, I, at this point, I would just have a scout team linebacker, or even the defensive end running around back there, uh, just trying to replicate the size, uh, to get people used to tackling. But that, that's just me. I know that throwing may be off if we did that. But again, got to stop that run game, number two run game in the nation. And I'm going to tell you, one of the top five is Tennessee, and that comes down next week. So this is not only for UCF, but this is a big game to show us what it may look like in Rocky Top at night coming up next week as well. And, you know, this is a UCF team that struggled against TCU, had a comeback to win. This is a team that couldn't get the job done in the red zone against Colorado. If they could, this is an entire, that would have been an entirely different game, but this is also a defense that we have that has had plenty of problems. One of which I tweeted out during the Mississippi state game talked about in the review. And that is the hurry up offense and Gus Malzahn. I do think we'll see some hurry up. I asked uh night bingo about it. And I think we see quite a bit of it. Um, Coming, If not, that is a failure on the Knights because we've had trouble against hurry-ups. Uh, Jeff Levy, Mississippi State, would always, once they went into that hurry-up, we couldn't stop them in left, unless the refs had stoppage of play or there's a penalty that ended up killing the drive, which happened several drives. Now, again, Gus Malzahn, who brought a formation to college football known as the Wildcat, really popularized it at Arkansas back in 2006. Um, of course, he was offense coordinator, head coach at Auburn. This is a guy who's known for doing some uh, up-tempo stuff. So they're def- I believe he's going to be ready to try that. The question is, are we going to be ready? I know Billy Napier has talked about uh, say what you will about it, taking two and a half years or two and a third years, I guess we could say, but realizing that takes us forever to get lined up. And one thing he did say, uh, I believe is on the SEC teleconference this week was that he's they've worked on getting calls in much faster on defense so they can be much ready or ready much faster on defense. So with that said, hopefully if we see that up tempo, we won't see the problems that we saw against Mississippi state and several times in the past, which, of course, was, hey, the Gators aren't ready. We've got free yards and taking advantage of that over and over and over again, especially if they do not substitute, meaning we don't have an opportunity to sub because if they sub, we get an opportunity and that slows the process down. So with that said, uh, just to summarize on offense, the Gators really need to establish the pass against a bad UCF defense and on the defense, the Gators have to stop a really good UCF run game. Now, Knight Bingle talked about one of their, one of their offensive linemen is having problems. We've got to take advantage of that ourselves as, as far as talent goes, we are the most talented team that UCF has faced on paper. The question is, will the coaching be there? Will the coaching put players in the best chance to succeed. And that's what we'll have to see Saturday night. And again, establish the pass on offense, stop the run on defense because KJ Jefferson will make mistakes. If you force him to beat you with his arm. And so with that said, if I had to give a prediction on this game, I actually think it's could I and I said this against Mississippi State could end up being a bit of a shootout, and I think it still could be a bit of a shootout here, as you've got you know one of the top four offenses in the nation. However, not a great pasty, and if we can get ball the ball to guys like Badger and DK and Mazel in space. There's talk that Trey Wilson took some snaps in practice. Uh, until I see him, you know, out there playing, I don't know. I'm not going to rely on him. 
uh, and because I don't want to get my hopes up. But that is, those are some really good offensive guys. And then also some of the other true freshman receivers. And of course, our tight ends get them involved. Um, and I think there are chances for us to score. I definitely think with our defense and their offense, they're going to have chances to score. So my prediction is going to be 35 31. I'm going to predict the Gators at home. The Gators scoring gets a defense, gets the crowd into it to help the defense. It's going to be a nice, magical night game. And it's going to be one that we need to boost our confidence going into Neyland next week. You cannot lose to. Uh, UCF. I will be honest about this. When I appeared on the Knighted Ones podcast talking about this game, I got a true. I got a question which was yes or no. This is Billy Napier's last game at Florida, and I'm going to say this. I know other podcasts have, but and this is what I gave as an answer. I said if we win, no, he's going to coach in Nealon. However, if we lose, it should be. So we will see, and we'll see if we've gotten adjustments on the offense, on the defense, and if we can beat a team that on paper we are definitely more talented in, or talented than. Either way, show up, cheer loud, let's have some fun, and let's show the UCF Knights what the best stadium atmosphere in college football is is all about with that said thank you all for listening and as always go gators